Hi, my name is Sushmita. Thank you so much for joining me today on today's podcast. Today we have very famous Annie Yoon Bai with us today. She is a public speaker. She has won many accolades, many international speeches. She is the winner of an international speech of 2019. And today we are going to talk about speech writing. Yes, I'm sure you now know the importance of speech writing and who can be better than her. She spoke on different platforms for the past 12 plus years. So being an author, I'm sure once you become an author, you now have to talk in front of people, tell people they will like you and they will buy more of your books from your follower, they become your fan. But how do you touch them? How do you talk to them? You talk to them through your speech. And today we have Annie with us. She has many years of experience and she's amazing at what she does. So Annie, welcome today. Welcome on our podcast. And I'm super excited to have you. So you a very welcome, warm welcome from all of us. Thank you, Sasmita. It's such a wonderful opportunity to be with you here. I'm excited to meet your audience as well. And hopefully I'll share some information that's going to be useful for them. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, Annie, I would like to start with your experience. I want you to tell me more about you so that we get to know about you more before we jump right into the speech writing thing. I would like to know more about you from you yourself. Sure, of course. Uh, I have started uh, being a very shy uh, lady <laughs> since I joined here uh, in Canada about uh, 20 years ago. The first thing I worried about so much was my English. I couldn't communicate well. I was lack of confidence in front of people. I didn't know how to get my get to my point when I get to a meeting, right, in front of uh, so many fluent native speakers. I shied away from so many things. But then I found this organization called Toastmaster International, and it was a platform for me to practice. I'm so glad that I made the decision to join back then, and then I was trying my best to improve uh, using all the opportunity that was presented to me. And today I have to tell you, uh, Sasmita, probably you can notice too, I'm quite different uh, from a couple of years ago because I have gained so much confidence in me to be the one who speak out. Although I, I might have some struggle here and there, but I don't want to shy away from my opportunity anymore. I wanted to grab it and be the best part of me. So it's a, it's a great uh, journey for me. I hope that if I share those secrets that with all the people around me, they will gain the same momentum to make that transformation in their life. And guess what? When you have more courage in you, life is better. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I totally agree. And I'm sure when it comes to speaking, a lot of people, they are amazing with uh, writing. They're amazing with, uh, like, you know, with talking in person. But when it comes to public speaking, speaking to strangers, I mean, we all are so scared. You have done it for so many years. You have, I know, and I'm sure you have had many barriers of your own as well. But your speeches, I heard your speech myself. You just like help your audience glue into it. And that creates a lot of impact. And like when you, from the start itself and your audience is glued into you, you can actually mold them and take them on a journey with you. So I'm super excited to learn from you equally. I'm sure my authors are as well equally excited to learn more. So I want to start with the first question of when it comes to writing speech, when you are actually working on creating a speech, what, how do you choose your topic? Well, I wanted to share with you the secret. I have a magical jar. Wow. <laughs> with all the topics in it. Right? Every single time I need to prepare a speech, I just stick my hand in it and pull a number out of it. And then I got my topic. <laughs> wow, that's 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 an amazing. So do you believe I, me? <laughs> I do, I do. I mean, and uh, probably I'm going to... Uh, 
use that for myself <laughs> because I keep thinking about how to do more topics about my upcoming sure. trainings. Yeah, and I can tell you that you can find that jar right here. <laughs> I know, I know. And above yeah. all, like, you know, your mind has so many topics sometimes exactly. and you forget. Exactly. Actually, we all have a jar here and we all have something magical inside that processing all the information coming in. But we need to form a new habit to keep them nicely in a very organized way. That would be really helpful when you need a topic, you can easily pull it from this magical jar. One of the great habits that I have formed uh, in the last couple of years is to be more mindful on picking up the stories around me. We are living our life by going through all different kinds of stories, right? But for a lot of time, people just simply ignore them. Well, they lived through it, then they forgot them, right? But those are precious things. And if you have a new habit to continue collect those great memories or messages, lesson learned into this magical jar and keep them in an organized way, it will be very helpful when you decide which topic you're gonna to talk about in your next event. When you pick a topic, there's one term you have to remember. It is stay connected, okay? Being a public speaker is a little bit different from being an author. You are having a instant connection with your audience right at that event. They're not delayed that reaction because they were reading your book at some other convenient time. Instead, they were standing right in front of you or sit right in front of you, listening to your words. So how do you stay connected by using that particular topic? One thing I would suggest is to do something or say something they are interested to hear, right? This is probably aligned with choosing a topic for your book as well. You want them to be interested, to listen to you, of course, for that particular speech, you want them to be extremely interested to listen to you and continue listening to you for the next like, 10, 20 minutes or even longer. These days, people are having a short focus span, right? We are trained to be multitasking and sometimes our mind keep on switching back and forth on different things. But when you meet a great public speaker, they will stay focused on that particular speaker and they would be so eager to learn more and listen more from that speaker. And you suddenly want that effect on your audience. So picking that topic that they're interested in is one big uh, selection criteria. And the second thing is pick a topic that has the connection with you from the inside. The more you have the connection with that particular topic, the more you can talk about it. In my uh, computation back last year, I picked a topic that's so dear and near to my heart. <laughs> I talked my fitness experience. Sasmita, I know you have the similar experience there. I was so passionate about dancing and getting fit and having a healthy life. So when I was sharing that speech and sharing those stories, I just had so much to talk about, right? I wouldn't be tired of talking. Instead, I would be excited by talking about that particular subject. In that way, you are deeply connected with the topic. And at the same time, your audience is deeply connected with your topic. How wonderful would that be? Right, they will not have a chance to leave you. Absolutely, I totally, uh, I mean, that's amazing. That's really great work you spoke about choosing a topic and topic that connects better with you because once you connect with a topic, it's easy to talk on that topic because it comes naturally and you will be able to connect with your audience even better as well. I'm sure that, I mean, that was, an amazing piece of advice. I, I'm sure 
my authors who are aspiring to become public speaker. And now because they are an author, now they will have to encourage people to become from their followers to their fans so that they can take themselves to the next level. And your advice is on point. I'm sure about that. I, I love it. I really, I am learning so much as well. <laughs> So tell me, in your opinion, what are the most important elements of a speech? Well, there are so many important elements. Right? We have the content, the delivery, there's so much to learn and practice. If I have to choose one element, I would say it is the message. The message you want to deliver to the world. Right, uh, it's the same thing like writing a book. Every single book, you ha you wanted to have one key message that's gonna be long lasting with your audience, with your readers. For a speech, you can do that as well. These days, every every everyone's busy, right? Everyone is taking a lot of tasks and. Uh, to survive and to thrive, to do all the amazing things in their life. When they focus to you to listen to your speech, you don't want to waste their time. You want to give them something valuable, something meaningful, something inspiring that lead them for so long and even change their life. That would be my purpose as a public speaker. I don't want to waste anybody's time by listening to me but during that period of time, if I could give them something that they could remember and enhance their life, I would fulfill my purpose as a public speaker. So when you are preparing a speech, think about what kind of a value you are giving to your audience. You know, a lot of people, they may or may not have all the practiced, polished skills when they deliver their speech. They may not have a well-written content, depends on right their education level or who helped them prepare the speech, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But they have one key message that touches people's heart. Make people remember that speech for a long time. When I did my winning speech last year, I give the message about self-love which is what I wanted to share with the whole world based on, my, based on my own experience. To this day, there are people coming to me and telling me they are still remember that message. They don't remember all the details that I've told them in my speech, all the jokes that I put it there, but they are telling me they remember the message that I gave it to them. I just feel so honored to hear that. So for sure, this is a piece of advice I wanted to give it to everybody. The key element is the message you want to deliver. Yes, that, like as said, that it, people will not remember what you did for them, but they will always remember how you made them feel. So your exactly. message will actually make them feel the feeling that you want to create. So I'm sure it's like amazing advice that it's very important to have a very strong message so that people will remember one thing from your speech. And that will automatically, when something similar happens, they will connect that message to you. So that, that's a very good, uh, very, very good point when it comes to the elements of a speech. But how do you incorporate? I'm sure like when it comes to uh, speaking, when it, when it comes to uh, preparing your speech, we all know about storytelling. So I would like to know, how do you incorporate the elements of storytelling in your speech? Well, storytelling, I would consider very, very high level <laughs> for a public speaker. It's not easy, uh, it, particularly hard for me. Of course, first of all, you need, you need to have a good magic jar here, right? With lots of, lots of stories. And when I decided to write a speech related to a certain topic, I would sit there for a long time to search through all my memories and try to make that connection with my personal stories here and there. I could go back to uh, my childhood to find something meaningful that influenced me 
to this point that could be related to the topic. Those are wonderful stories to share, to stay connected with your audience. But it's really a skill for everybody to practice. It takes time for you to use it over and over again into speeches to polish the skills so you can tell the story the way you wanted to make the impact, right? You might have a good story in you, but you may or may not have the skill to tell it. A couple of uh, key challenges that I want to say is, one, uh, being patient. <laughs> you know, when I have a great story, I'm so eager to tell you, right? I already have all the picture in my mind. I just want to tell you here and there and show you how excited I am by telling the story. But do you get it, right? As a storyteller, you're going to have to calm down. <laughs> you're going to have to be patient that your audience is not at the same level as you. Like, I'm, get, I'm guessing writing a book, uh, especially a fiction book, would be the same. As an author, you have everything in your brain, right? You have the whole story. But when you are trying to tell that whole story to your readers, you're going to have to pace it down into the detail level so they can absorb it digest it little by little. The same with the public speaking. A storytelling has to be in an efficient time to be, tell, to be told with enough content and details that your audience can be brought up into the same level as you. You are like a painter painting a picture in their brain on how you are portrayed the story, right? but they need to use their paintbrush to paint their own with the words that you are giving to them. So being patient is very important when you're telling the story, make sure you control your excitement and give it out little by little. And of course, I always emphasize authenticity when telling a story. You want to tell them true story with a deep connection with yourself, with the truth, with the lessons, with the vulnerability that you can share with them. And sometimes that helps to enhance your storytelling, although you are not top of the notch on the skills, but you are telling a honest, trustworthy story that people can benefit from it, that usually work as well. Correct. I, I can't agree more on that because when it comes to uh, when I talk to my authors and we talk about uh, writing the content initially, it's more of a conversation on what not to include rather than what actually to include. Because when it comes to in writing a story or writing, creating a content, it's like I have so much things in my brain, so much. Basically, if it is an autobiography or memoir kind of a thing, it's so hard to exclude the part rather than include. So I am 100% INE. I will agree with you when you said it is very important to say little by little that excitement. Oh my God, I have to say everything. It's something we have to pull ourselves back and like, okay, hold on, take take a deep breath, then decide where you want to go ahead. So that's an amazing uh, advice. And your experience really shows in, uh, when you speak about all those elements. I'm sure it's, uh, it is showing in your speech for sure. So I have another question for you, um, Annie. It's like when it comes to the authors, the writers who are writing, for the first time, what would be your suggestion to someone who is actually writing for the first time itself? I'm sure, I mean, it's been long uh, that you have st really started writing, but you are a mentor to so many. So I'm sure you will be able, able to guide us through your experience on what should they do. Yeah, uh, being a speech writer, a public speaker, I think I made uh, the right decision like 13 years ago by joining the first club and started to work on it. And today I have to say there are a lot of things I should have decided to do, <laughs> but I haven't. 
So for all the new writers there, if you want to do something, if you want to write your book, if you want to start it, start practicing public speaking, you're gonna have to do it now. <laughs> that would would be the best time to start. Right? There's uh, no procrastination. There's no delay because this is what you want to do. You're gonna have to do it. You know, I have to commit that I'm not. <laughs> Well, sometimes I pro procrastinate too. Lately, I talked to a lady, her name is uh, Marilyn. I'm sure you know her as well. And I got to know Marilyn um, through you, actually. We were uh, both in your book publishing workshop and we exchanged some conversation on our WhatsApp. And she's telling me that she's so close to getting to finish her book. I was yes. so happy for her. <laughs> Yeah, I could feel the excitement from the way she is playing the, 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 the book about uh, or her journey related to the book writing. You know, after the book workshop that we both attended, which was hosted by you, she was the one who dived right into it, right? And she was so brave and so courage and everyone else was like still looking and checking to see whether we should do it or not to do it, but she was there. And I don't think she's uh, more skillful than any one of us in terms of uh, book writing or even writing itself, but she just had the idea about her book and she had the urge to express it, right? Today, look back, she made the absolute right decision there and she has made so much progress and now she's talking about writing another book. <laughs> <laughs> One, you know, after you build up your knowledge, your confidence build up together with it. Uh, I, I was just so inspired talking to her and today, I should say that I regret the day that I didn't start writing the book, but she did. There are a lot of time that we can relate to this kind of decision. We delayed on something because of something else. But honestly speaking, it was fear, isn't it? <laughs> it was always fear that we couldn't deliver the way we want, we wouldn't have enough time to do so on and so forth. If you don't have enough courage to do it, you always can find another excuse for not doing it. Totally so agree. Think about what you want to do, right? If writing a book is your next task, next dream to achieve, might as well start now. <laughs> right. I, I can't agree more. Seriously. It's like taking action is so important. Like, as you said about Marilyn, I mean, we... We are now almost, uh, she has finished her manuscript and uh, she was procrastinating, procrastinating. She procrastinated for six months. And oh. then like we worked together, I said like, hey, you get to get it done, Marilyn. And then we sat together, we did some like outlining and within five weeks, this lady, she wrote a, six chapters. And I was like, that's amazing. Now we are almost, you will get the good news for sure. It's like coming slowly. So yeah, that's that's very true. It's very She's important. Very to grateful for you for pushing her through this journey. And yeah. I think without you being the guidance and being the, the coach there, she probably couldn't make it to this level. But because of you and she are she's so happy like achieving to this level. I, I am so happy for her too. And uh, yeah, she, I am really, I, when she, when we started working, she was like, uh, and I'm glad that she is in my uh, team of authors and there she is, is an amazing woman herself. She has so much uh, to give to the society, to give to people through prayers and leadership qualities that she has in herself, which is like, you know, she herself doesn't uh, even experience that, mm -hmm. hey, I have that. So I would say she had everything in her. I just gave her a little push. That's it. 
Yeah. We all we all need that push, right, Teddy? Sure. We all need that push. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. I totally agree when you say that uh, it is very important to take action. And for the speakers who are, for the writers who are writing for the first time, we all know how to write. It's just that we have to take that action to start writing. And that action creates all the change that is required. Even when you, uh, tell me, Annie, when you actually started writing yourself, what were a few uh, barriers that you had to overcome apart from your own uh, point of procrastination? Other than that, what else would, did you face which might help someone in the same boat? Well, the biggest thing that I have to overcome is not just about writing, it's about everything uh, would be my uh, myself being a professionist. It's a uh, it's a hard uh, it's hard to have this thing in your brain all the time since the very beginning. And then when I was young, the way I was educated back in China, um, my academic work was A is the only mark you could get, right? <laughs> Anything below A is not good. Yeah, Chinese and Indians are the same, you know. We have, if you <laughs> yeah. are not A pointer then you are no pointer <laughs> exactly so so if I, I i i was not there to bring anything other than a but after a while you were trained to be that way then you would work everything to reach that goal um in in your lifetime but reality is you couldn't do that right you cannot guarantee you're gonna strike for a straight A when you write your first book. You cannot guarantee your audience would like your speech when you deliver it the very first time to the class. Even for now, I'm a champion. Now I'm writing different speeches and trying to deliver in different clubs. There are people who don't like it, right? There, are, You can't guarantee that everyone would like it. And in this new world, we are facing audience from every single corner in this world. It could be someone in different countries, different cultures, different backgrounds, different language. If you wanted to do something to make everybody like you, then you'd better not doing anything. <laughs> but being a professionist, you always want to make things the best that you can do. You want to pick the right time, the best time, the best effort, the best people, best cover or best word that you can put it in this particular paragraph, which is not possible, right? So I constantly uh, have to talk to myself uh, to be more realistic, right? If you wanted to do this, you have to overcome this. Don't think about the result. Think about the joy of doing it. Like we both in this fitness journey, right? We were uh, working hard on building a good body structure and healthy uh, lifestyle, right? A lot of people want to target on losing weight. So they would set a goal and saying that I'm gonna lose weight in, uh, in a month for 30, 30 pounds, right? Then that goal becomes so frustrating. Because every morning when you step on your scale and find out you are actually half a pound more than last night. Exactly. <laughs> you will be so disappointed, right? You will lose your power on continue this journey. Like my lesson learned from that experience was that I have to focus the joy when I'm doing it. Right? I, I'm into Zumba dancing. So at every moment when I was dancing, I'm fully there. I enjoy sweating and uh, exercising by doing my dance, but not looking at the result of how many pounds I actually gonna lose because of that. So right. that's really a change of mindset, which is so helpful for me to overcome my perfectionist. Looking at the moment, but not the final result. Yeah, perfectionism was even my problem. Like when I started my journey in 2000 and uh, my online teaching journey in 2013, 14. So that time I was, uh, it took me two years to actually perfect one course. Nowadays I can create a course 
within a week. And I was like, I was perfecting it so much. It is till today, it is not perfect. But that perfectionist is a very, very big problem. We always think it as like something which is very pro and positive, but being a perfectionist can have its own problem as well. Because you keep perfecting things and things cannot be perfect, never. It's not possible. And I totally agree there. So the main important thing for anyone who is writing for the first time to come overcome the barriers of perfectionism is like very important. It's like take action, move it. Whatever knowledge you have in you is already enough. A lot of people might not have that knowledge as well. So go ahead, go ahead with a bang, right? <laughs> it's actually a double edged sword, right? It has the disadvantage, but it has the advantage. Of course. Uh, I'm sure you are a professionist as well because I, I saw how you strive for the excellence yes. in your life, right? You were able to achieve so many things because you wanted to strive for a better and yes. better life and better capability. I agree. I agree. Right. But I made sure that I don't use that perfectionism problem, I would say, uh, or perfectionism. In I use that perfectionism at my advantage rather than at my disadvantage, which exactly. was holding me. Yeah, yeah that's something I, I need to learn from you as well. I will be glad to. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I have learned to take action rather than like, you know, stopping everything and keep working on the same thing because taking action have taught me that it is very important to take action because if you take action there are a few things which others don't even know which you think like you are keeping on perfecting make getting your message to the world is more important rather than keeping on perfecting it so that is the only thing that i would say it's, it has helped me and i know um Annie, you are uh, you are a founding member of uh, Miracle Chinese and, and uh, English Bilingual Toastmaster Club, and uh, you help people who come to the country and has a mother tongue influence, help them learn English and become comfortable. And I'm sure you had your share of the same journey as well. But now look at you, you are amazing. So for people, like I know, because we are now living in a digital world where we have like people uh, listening to us from around the world and a lot of people who judge. People love to judge others, right? So how do you, when it comes to people speaking in front of others, we tend to have not, all of us will not have mother tongue influence. Some of us will have mother tongue influence and that's, that's totally normal to have mother tongue influence. So, but the fear of people judging us, mm -hmm. how, what would be your recommendation? Because you have seen both the world. What would be your recommendation to people who have that fear and because of which they are not taking their message in front of the world when they know that their message create impact and change lives? Mm -hmm. Good question. Uh you know, I attended uh, a, a event about uh, uh, before the COVID, right? Uh, and be a keynote speaker there. Uh, at the event, I received a similar question. Um, they were asking me, how do I overcome gender barriers, language barriers, and cultural barriers? Okay. Uh, we are uh, female women and we have a lot of more challenge I would probably have more challenge than our male, male counterpart in this world how do we overcome all of these barriers and become more successful in our life and i told my audience that there is a very secret message and i want to give it to them and immediately all of those barriers will be gone in their life and i asked them do you want to know? <laughs> Everyone put up their hand. Yeah, there, there is a secret that you can overcome all of these barriers, which is, I'm going to share with you, says Mita. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not waiting. Consider, yeah, not considering them as barriers anymore. Right. So very first thing is to accept them. Okay. After practicing English for so many years, I have to say, I will not be speaking as good as a native speaker for the rest of my life. <laughs> I 
I can continue improving and getting better, but I will never ever speak language, speak English as good as them. It's not gonna be my mother tongue. It will always be my father tongue. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's good. Okay. At the, same, at the same time, I don't want to lose Chinese. I just feel so lucky that um, I learned Chinese first because <laughs> it is harder. <laughs> so now I, I can have two languages in my life. It's a privilege. But I don't want to have the fear of not speaking uh, fluent English or 100% accurate English to stop anything that I want to do in my life. You know, the fear is the thing that in our mind becomes so big that we overestimate it. We overestimate the reaction from people who are around us. We build this delusion in our mind that people will dislike us because we are making some grammar error in the sentence. <laughs> you know, when I review this recording, I might feel that there are some places I'm not speaking the right <laughs> words or, or I, I was making mistakes. But I have to give the message. I, I hope I am giving the message to all of you that is meaningful and valuable. And you would take that message rather remembering all the flaw that I made in my language. And I believe people are communicate by spirit and by heart, not just by language. If I'm telling you with something that meaningful, with honesty, you would listen, right? You would uh, be tolerant for the language that I'm using then there are people who are not keen on communication. And it's our job to sit there and listen and trying to understand them. You may want to find those people in your life. If people are picky on your language and decided to just leave you, they're not your group. They're exactly. not part of a community. And it's better they're gone, right? <laughs> exactly. You wanted to be with the people who are more generous of their time and they, more, they are more willing to help you. They are more willing to understand you, right? And fortunately, we are living in Canada. I think this is a wonderful place that people totally. coming from different backgrounds, coming from different culture. And honestly, if you go into a park, nobody, <laughs> nobody <laughs> speaking native English. <laughs> it's very rare, right? You, you can have a um, native speaker the one out of 10, I would say. But that doesn't stop anybody to become friends. This is a wonderful, uh, this is a wonderful thing about Canada. Totally, I, I agree. I mean, I keep telling that Canada is my sole country. I lived in the US, I lived, I have been visited so many countries, but when it comes to Canada, it's like seriously, it's a sole country because people are not judgmental over here. They will judge less. And uh, that's the best part definitely about the country. And I really like your advice when you said that when it comes to your language barrier, you are never going to be speaking as a native Canadian, as a native English speaker. And that's okay. I mean, we, um, I know a person very close who was so much when she was becoming an author and she was so much into, oh my God, my my book, my uh, speech, my notes cannot have a single grammatical error. It should be grammatically perfect. And that's, a, that's something, something which is very debatable because grammatically correct and a phrase, English can have different phrase in a different dialect in a different way, which is correct for me can be equally wrong for you, which is wrong, correct for you can be wrong for me. So it's like being perfect in like thinking about that I will be perfect everywhere. People tend to lose the genuinity to tr actually deliver the message, to make it so perfect that the content itself get crushed. 
So it, that, I really like that advice when you say that except that you are never going to speak like a native speaker and that's okay. I mean, it's okay. We should be proud of knowing our language, right? Exactly. It's like, uh, and we are able to speak English. That's an achievement for us where it is our father language, not the mother tongue, right? <laughs> I love that when you said the father tongue. So yeah, overall, like I'm sure uh, my audience, my authors are now really equipped with when they are writing their first speech. You had shared amazing, amazing input. And I'm so glad that you accepted my invitation and you came here and spoke. You have given amazing uh, notes, amazing pointers that which I'm sure when uh, my people, they are they will apply, they will benefit from it. It shows that how your experience, how uh, how much of a experience you have and how much you have grown. Things just don't happen. It comes from the experience that you have gained. And thank you so much, Annie, for coming in today and speaking to us and talking about your experience and sharing those amazing anecdotes of success. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for having me. I, I certainly very much enjoy our conversation here. I'm looking forward to the time that uh, the whole sh lockdown is lifted up and then we can meet in person. Of course, our coffee yeah. date, right? <laughs> yeah, that would be so exciting. And uh, uh, for all the listeners here, and if you find anything useful in your life uh, for building your first speech, that would be my biggest pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annie. And with that, we are done with uh, today's podcast. I'm sure you had your learning, amazing learning from Annie. Take notes, apply it in your writing your speech for your followers, for say it for your book, maybe your introduction chapter, anything. Apply her mantras, her anecdotes, her teachings and create a miracle for yourself. Thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Sushmita and I will see you with next episode.